Good afternoon to everyone and welcome to today's session of the NEED PG mock test discussion another two months to go. <clears throat> now which is the vitamin whose deficiency leads to the development of methyl melanic acid urea? So whenever methyl melanyl CoA has to convert into succinyl CoA you require the vitamin B12 is what you need to remember. On the ECG, what are you seeing, Dr. Torsidis depointis, which is a polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. And what is the drug that is responsible? It is the sparfloxacin. Sparfloxacin has a high tendency to prolong the QT interval. What is the normal QT interval? Up to 0.42 and beyond 0.6, you call it as prolonged QT interval is what need to be remembered. So you should watch the movie where uh, Tom Hanks uh, acts as a uh, HIV positive uh, individual. Very good movie it is. I am unable to recall the name. So his employer uh, fires him from the job when he comes to know that he is a HIV positive. He himself is an attorney. Tom Hanks. Then he countersues his boss. So, very good movie. Some uh, good Hollywood movies which are based on medical, true medical stories are worth watching. Huh? So, it is uh, human herpes virus 8. So, what is this acute lesion in the figure? It is acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis which is caused by Borrelia vincenti is what need to be remembered. <coughs> Now, one of the favorite MCQ in the NEET PG exam is the antiplatelet drugs. How does clopidogrel act? How does the um, uh, adenosine antagonizing drugs act? Etc. Etc. So, the drug C which is being shown is prosugrel, which typically blocks the ADP receptor irreversibly, is what need to be remembered. Now, for this given abnormality, it is a narrow complex tachycardia, tachycardia and uh, typically narrow complex tachycardias are all, are all uh, generally supraventricular tachycardias, broad complex tachycardias are ventricular tachycardias. So, adenosine is considered to be the drug of choice for the management of the supraventricular tachycardia. The drug B has an antiplatelet action and where is the B is acting on? Typically it is acting on uh, the um, COX-1 which is important for the uh, uh, cloxygenase pathway. So it is the aspirin which is the one which inhibits the cyclooxygenase enzyme thereby inhibiting the thromboxane A2 formation is what need to be remembered. Now this anti-epileptic drug is acting on voltage gated sodium channel typically. So it is the perempenol which is acts by uh, acting on the glutamate receptor actually. Drug uh, H no sorry. A, B, C, D, F, G, H, H. H is acting on the glutamate receptor. So, the perempenol is the one which is the one whose mechanism is by inhibiting the glutamate receptor is what need to be remembered. Megha, Giri, Ali and many more who are all online, very happy to see. Once upon a time, we used to have 160 students online. Another 200 says, 200 students in the classroom. So, <clears throat> we used to have a glorious debates and discussions. Same time that used to get broadcasted to 1000 plus students in learning centers. So, uh, now the test has come all the way into the mobile app also. Uh, this week it came in mobile app. It should come actually. If you, even when you come here, you didn't. Huh? Uh, in that, are you able to get in UMedico 
the where is the test you know mock test is one on the dashboard on that if you click you are having uh, the exam test practice test exam test is every week the test that happens will be there and uh, by today evening they will shift it into practice test if you don't answer so that's how uh, it happens but you will get a comparative analysis i will give you a demo on how to use that drug c has a uh, reversible anti platelet action so it is typically acting on uh, the adp receptor p2y12 so once more prasugrel actually it's a repeat now on the synthetic phase of the cell cycle which is the drug that is basically acting so you should remember hydroxyurea it acts by inhibiting the ribonucleoside diphosphate reductase so that the dna formation get affected and that's how it acts on the synthetic phase so these are all the very very standard questions in the neat pg exam repeatedly asked and you should answer it reflexly in the tomorrow's exam which drug typically acts by acting on the site a a is the site where uh, the viral dna polymerase is there so it is um, all other drugs act there but not indenavir indenavir is a protease inhibitor so once more doctor anti retroviral drugs and what is their mechanism we discussed this in a very large extent in our uh, dnb medicine question bank dnb question bank in uh, medicine subject there are discussion videos available both on the web and also on the u medico try to review because invariably without doubt every session you go to the neat pg or dnb you will have two to three questions on hiv without that there is no paper hmm? now which anti epileptic drug is this uh, typically labeled as uh, g g is acting on the calcium channel so uh, t type of calcium channel cytosuximide which is used in absent seizures is the one which acts typically on the thalamus you have t type calcium channels that is the important location and pathophysiological basis for the development of absent seizures is what need to be remembered now what is this drug c which is acting at the level of in the viral cycle after the virus is being manufactured it need to become released at the time of release of the movie supreme court gives a ban on the rajni khan movie or kamal hasan movie very famous movies so who is the drug c which acts like a court supreme court which gives a ban it is oseltamivir which basically acts by inhibiting the influenza virus neuraminidase enzyme which is needed for the release of the babies of the virions from getting released is what you need to remember 26 year old tested to be hiv positive he developed a typical reaction to steven johnson steven johnson is typically a complication of nevirapine is what you need to basically remember so what is this drug x acting on this once more the synthetic phase so uh is it on drug what is the drug x now okay okay m phase so meiotic inhibitor will be vincristin uh which binds to the microtubular protein tubulin is what you need to remember 47 year old comes so once more let me tell you two questions came on anti neoplastic drug mechanisms if you did this how many of you did all the two correct at least one correct one correct two correct both the things correct or two correct ah uh, so if you have done wrong immediately after going home acha biryani khana so jana uthna reading room jana chai cup pakad ke kill the topic anti retroviral drugs anti neoplastic drugs how can i do this wrong 
If you think that okay, my Wednesday schedule में anti neoplastic drugs खाए बोल के उसको छोड़ दिए तो वो Wednesday कभी जिंदगी में आएगा ही नहीं. It won't come at all. So be very sure. Huh? What you can do today, now you need to do like a type A personality, right? Type B personality means oh, let the top of the mountain come to my bottom. He will say. And type A is he carries his bottom to the top of the mountain. That is what is needed for entrance exam to win the exams. It is all a question of willpower, adrenaline levels. Nothing to do with intelligence. If you yield, you will dissolve. If you don't yield, you resist, you fight back, you will come out. So that's a simple secret. Forty-eight year old with complaints of breathlessness, fatigue. Crepitations in the chest with hepatomegaly, pedal edema. What is the mechanism of this drug, which is a sodium potassium ATPase inhibitor? So why all this? No tanki. Directly bol sakte na. Sodium potassium ATPase inhibitor is digoxin. Now what is this drug acting on the cell wall synthesis, doc? Vancomycin acts by inhibiting the transglycolase and acts like a cell wall synthesis inhibitor. So typically, what are you seeing in this ECG, and what is a drug which is basically responsible? So basically, if you look, there is a, um, um, a, there are no P waves seen. So atrial fibrillation. So in atrial fibrillation, you can use uh, digoxin, amiodarone, propranolol, but not adenosine, as all of you know very well. Now, what is this drug which is acting at the site E? Yeah. So once more, it is acting on uh, uh, cell membrane. So polymyxins they have a detergent-like action on the cell membrane. Soap ke jaise, like a soap detergent action. They will wash the cell membrane nicely. That's what you need to identify. Now, what is this clinical condition? Uh, which drug in the dose of 100 milligram is given? So basically, it is Dapsone, which is basically given in leprosy at 100 milligram daily. Now, anti-epileptic drug C, by its mechanism of action, typically uh, it is a gabapentin, which acts by enhancing GABA release, is the main mechanism of action, as all of you know very well. Now, whose drug, I mean the drug A, what is its mechanism of action? So, drug A is acting at the level of the uncoating of the parent virus. So, can you, yeah. So, typically, it is amantidine, which acts at a very early step as well as a late step. In the early step, while uncoating, and second time during the assembly of the virus, both the locations have entered in basically act. A 38 year old is typically having a prolongation of QT followed by toxicous depointus. So it is once more caused by moxifloxacin. All these fluoroquinolones are known to lead to development of QT prolongation. Drug A, what is the mechanism of action? Typically, the drug A is acting on the glycoprotein 2B3A and uh, apsiximab is the one which has got an antiplatelet action because it uh, acts at the level of the GP2B3A. Whenever any platelet happens to clock together, then fibrinogen fills the mesh. So, fibrinogen need to come and adhere to the platelet and GP2B3A basically acts. So, by now you should be sure what is von Willebrand disease, Glanzmann's thrombosthenia, etc, etc. All these antiplatelet drugs, right? So, I mean antiplatelet uh, disorders, huh? typically. Now, 20 year old female with a mobile breast mass, which you are able to see here. 
so uh, typically it is a fibro adenoma which is a well defined mass as all of you know now 35 year old with such a huge breast mass is an example of a phyllodes tumor which almost replaces the entire breast is what you need to basically remember now a 50 year old female with ulcerated breast mass ulceration is a feature of the malignancy so breast carcinoma 15 year old with a fever and uh, uh, pain in the femur and what you are seeing is a involucrum which is a dead part of the femur and uh, that is typically seen in case of osteomyelitis 25 year old in the lower end of the femur what is this typical lesion based on the histopathology there are the Jain cells of the Jain cell tumor that you are able to see. 45 year old with the excruciating pain in the big toe. Always big toe involvement means you don't need even to look at picture. It is gout. So typically in gout, kya hota hai? what is elevated? Serum uric acid. And what type of crystals do you have in gout? Needle shaped crystals. Then a 2 year old has a delayed milestones and died of seizure and on autopsy the brain is being shown so what you are seeing in the brain is a hydrocephalus and dilatation of the ventricles is the feature which is being shown in uh, typically the two year old who has a delayed uh, milestones and uh, who had got seizures he has got an underlying uh, hydrocephalus and a two year old with delayed milestones on autopsy, what is this on the brain? It is lysencephaly. So, how did you conclude that it is lysencephaly? Typically, the gyri and sulky pattern which is expected in the brain, if it is missing, then you call it as lysencephaly, is what you need to basically remember. A case of intrauterine death was followed on autopsy. And uh, what is true about this condition? So typically, um, there is a poor prognosis in lysencephaly. There is no gyral pattern, hence also called agyria. That is what you need to conclude. Now what is this congenital malformation? Here there is a herniation of the cerebellum down into the spinal canal. Your favorite question your favorite uh, uh, answer so here you should answer it as adrenal cherry malformation is what you need to remember and this is a case of intrauterine death and autopsy is typically showing um, the features of adrenal cherry so there is an associated myelomeningocele and hydrocephalus is invariably present posture fossa becomes small because why posture become posture become small because there is a herniation of cerebellum and that makes the posture fossa to become small and uh, there is a downward extension of the vermis of the cerebellum through the foramen magnum that's how you define the condition now what is this congenital malformation which you are able to see so typically it is a dandy walker's malformation and in this the posterior fossa is typically dilated posterior fossa unlike in case of adrenal cherry where posterior fossa is smaller posterior fossa op ghai abhi bhi padh pediatrics what is the book you read op ghai so adrenal cherry dandy walker a sub all these things you can nicely read in the pediatric neurology huh? So, if you have done these two questions wrong, just go back and check because this is one of the favorite regularly asked question which you need to remember. This is a case of intrauterine death and uh, features are shown. What is true about this condition? So, uh, already we discussed this I think, posture fossa is dilated. There is... Um, uh, dysplasias of brainstem nuclei in dandy walker, cerebellar vermis is absent and hydrocephalus is seen. 
Now, 22 year old met an accident and an autopsy. What is being shown to you? You are able to see the contusions of the brain classically, and typically, contusions are often seen on the front end whenever the head is hit. Typically, you see it on the frontal lobe. That's what you need to remember. And uh, it is not on the occipital lobe, contusions are seen, but whenever the head suffers such a trauma, there can be a tearing of the vessels and that can lead to the development of the hemorrhage into the subarachnoid space is what you have to remember. A 22 year old has met an accident and had head injury and an autopsy the brain is being shown and what is your diagnosis. Classically there is a diffuse axonal injury and uh, uh, in the white matter that is what you are able to see. A 22 year old, once more head injury, few facts about diffuse axonal injury. Microscopically there will be axonal swelling and by very nature diffuse means bilateral not unilateral, everybody know that. Huh? And uh, they are very much developed in the deep white matter, diffuse axonal injuries. And uh, uh, it is not only in head injury, anoxic brain damage etc. there can be Suppose intubation got delayed, resuscitation got delayed, decreased blood supply, there can be diffuse axonal injury that will take away the person into a deep coma. 22 year old met with an accident and had a an head injury. On autopsy, the brain is showing the presence of the bleed and uh, it is a epidural hemorrhage which is being seen outside the um, dura. Pheochromocytomas, carcinoma thyroid, lumpy bumpy neuromas typically is an example of men type 2b syndrome. Anybody did this question wrong? Oh, if multiple endocrine neoplasia question gone wrong, 20,000 ranks you will be behind. There are some questions if you do wrong, no doctor. The impact factor is very bad. It is like getting duck out in the first or second ball. Every whole world is expecting Sachin Tendulkar will do big time batting and suddenly fourth ball, fifth ball, Virat Kohli is duck out. That kind of situation it is. So, the smart Jagrata Jagrata. Today only go back, open up, where is my multiple endocrine neoplasia? That high yield topic list is there, no? Please don't ignore. <coughs> did, did you get high yield topic booklet? Hey, give high yield topic booklet. 650 topics. Hmm? <coughs> Out of them, at least 50% you read. 30 topics you read. <coughs> you are on the top of the world. I mean, 300 topics you read totally. You are on the top of the world. Let me tell you. <coughs> and men's syndrome is one such question. Repeatedly asked, you can't do mistake. Every need session, every need PG session, you will get the questions on <coughs> salivary tumor, thyroid carcinoma. Standard. Like you go to Wooty or Shimla or anywhere, you have a sunrise point, sunset point, suicide point, eco point. Right? So that's very important. <coughs> now, ultrastructural finding on the glomerular basement membrane along with the hearing abnormality. So this is called a basket weave appearance. Classically, a feature which you see in case of the Alport syndrome is what you need to remember. So it's a normal GBM and this is an abnormal GBM which is thin. And this is a abnormally split GBM with a lamination, which is typically a feature of Alport. In which Hodgkin's disease do you see this kind of lacunar type of Reed Steinberg? Lacunar Reed Steinberg is the most characteristic feature of nodular sclerosis that has the best prognosis, is what you need to basically remember. Then uh, the GI polyp whose histology is being shown, 
is showing a hematoma. This is a classical example of a mal structured tissue without any hyperchromatic nuclei or any precancerous features. So hematomas are the part of the pute Zegers syndrome is what you need to remember. <clears throat> now what is this electrical product? Don't tell dry cleaner. Right? Washing machine. No. So it is for the storage of the vaccine ice line refrigerator. Thiomerosorol is a component of the DPD vaccine. Oh, this is the, I think cheapest question on the entire Asia. Huh? Tuberculosis BCG vaccination. So this kind of questions if you do wrong now. For next 20 years there will be a ban. Even if you are performing very well next year also they won't uh, give you the need PG seat. Huh? <coughs> now what is this instrument? Shainai. Huh? What is this? So it is an anemometer. At least this time our preventive medicine MCQ setting uh, SAR is a good SAR. He is not giving uh, Joseph Lister's photographs. Sir. We told him last time don't give so many photographs. Sir. No, identify the use of this instrument. So this instrument is typically the venturi meter which is used to measure the flow of the fluid. Now what is this instrument in the image which is being shown? So basically it is uh, a wind vane. It helps for you to know what is the direction of the wind. It is very very important. Now what is this? I identify this symbol. So North Korea guy loves this symbol. Huh? So it is nuclear based symbol. So all the notes that you write uh, for the uh, entrance preparation, no? after getting seat you put this symbol on those books and throw them away. It's a complete nuclear waste. Huh? So give back your notes to us when you get uh, the seat. So what we will do is we will scan your notes, put it up into the U Medico app as a PDF for the people to access it freely. Like that if about 10,000 people happen to give their notes, there will be many free downloads that happen and people will enjoy reading the topper's notes. We will mention this is the notes written by so and so topper and then upload and people can be able to access the important contents of your mnemonics and your way of remembering and all. And uh, forever you will remain in the glorious era of uh, I read that topper's notes, this topper's notes. At least it will give a psychologically comfort feeling that 500 topper's notes is there in my app. Uh, I am a very very happy man. Whether I become topper or not, God knows. <laughs> so, identify the use of the instrument. So, fundamentally it is uh, a chlorination chloroscope which is used to identify the residual chlorine in drinking water after chlorination. So what is this symbol? Janani, sorry it is a family planning logo, sorry, uh, with an inverted red triangle, very good. Now this is for uh, tuberculosis, directly observed treatment, short course for the tuberculosis. Then this is Janani. Sishu Suraksha Karikram. So, uh, so basically, blood transfusions are uh, not chargeable. Free and cashless delivery, free drugs and consumables. Okay. So, quickly get a MD seat immediately after your MBBS. If you don't get your elders won't stop, they will get you married, you will produce a kid, still you are uh, working as a duty doctor here and there. Ultimately when you have kid and you are preparing for PG entrance, you can't tell people anymore that I am doing PG preparation, you have to tell Janani who is your wife and Sishu who is your child. Janani Sishu Suraksha Karakram instead of neat PG preparation, 
right so we should give some discount to all married uh, doctors who are preparing for entrance you know special discount now under the scheme then we can add free need pg preparation under janani suraksha program so it is the free entitlement for uh, sick newborn still 30 days not 60 days after birth now what is this logo so basically it is the icds logo which you have to be quite sure about 